It's safe to say that making armor is one of the most intimidating aspects of cosplay, especially when you're just starting out. It's really easy to look at these armor projects that other cosplayers make and think to yourself, there's no way I could ever do that. But I'm here to tell you, you can. If you're intimidated by armor, the first thing you can do is learn about all the different materials you'll be working with during your pauldron-making adventures. Remember, knowledge is power, and it's going to be your greatest ally while you figure out how to cosplay your latest Fire Emblem waifu or whatever it is you kids are obsessed with these days. I say that like I haven't cosplayed from Fire Emblem. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into making armor than just choosing what material you're going to work with but you kind of have to do that before anything else. So what we're going to do in this video is go through the most common materials that cosplayers use when making armor. Things like your budget, the tools you have available, and your time frame will be major factors that determine which material you choose, along with what you'll be making, of course. For the purpose of not making this a 20 minute video, we're just going to cover the bare bone basics of each of these materials. Then if you want actual tutorials and project examples, please check the links in the description. So let's dive into this crash course on cosplay armor materials. First up, cardboard. That's right, there's no need to be fancy if you don't want to. You can make awesome armor with cardboard. The benefits of cardboard are that it's lightweight, cheap, and easy to find. I'm sure we all have plenty of these lying around because we like to buy stuff. However, cardboard is very weak and it's susceptible to water damage. Also, it can look really bad unless you put in the extra effort to make it look really good. Next up, still on the budget-friendly side of the spectrum, is craft foam. This can be called things like fun foam or foamies at your local craft store. You'll usually find it in the kids' project section. Like cardboard, craft foam is cheap, lightweight, and it comes in a variety of thicknesses. It's also really easy to prime for painting. Depending on how you finish it, craft foam can look really, really amazing. Keep in mind, it can't easily form complex curves, and you have to prime it before you paint it, otherwise the paint will just soak right into the porous surface. While we're talking about foam, let's talk about EVA foam. Craft foam is technically EVA foam, but when cosplayers refer to EVA foam, they're usually talking about this stuff. If someone in your family has a workshop, chances are they've got this on the floor. Like craft foam, EVA foam is light and inexpensive, but its added thickness makes it more durable. It's also great for pieces that need to show battle damage. A few warnings. Sometimes hot glue won't be enough to hold it together, so you'll need to use contact cement instead. And contact cement can be pretty nasty stuff. It can also be difficult to fill in and hide seams. If you're curious about learning more EVA foam techniques, I highly recommend picking up a copy of Foam Smith by Punished Props. It's an EVA foam bible that will teach you everything that you need to know about working with this material. Lastly, on the note of foam, you'll also see people using things like insulation foam and expanding foam when it comes to adding things like armatures and other details to their armor. But neither of these materials are really used that often to create a base armor structure. And if they are used, they're typically covered with thermoplastics. So speaking of thermoplastics, you like that segue there? The number one thermoplastic on the market at the time of making this video is Warbla. The main reasons we all love Warbla so much is that it can stretch, it can handle complex curves, it's self-adhesive, and you can reuse all of your scraps. But regular Warbla does have its downsides. Most people have to order online. It's very expensive. It's very thin, so it has to be double layered or combined with craft foam. And it has a very rough, bumpy texture that requires extensive priming with wood glue or gesso. Fortunately, a lot of those issues have been solved with the introduction of black Warbla. So fancy. In addition to many of the same benefits as regular Warbla, black Warbla is smoother, thicker and more durable, more stretchable, and it can handle finer, thinner detail work. Of course, like regular Warbla, you do have to most of the time order it online and it's very expensive. And the self-adhesive on black Warbla also isn't as strong, so you may need to use super glue to reinforce the bonds at stress points. If you want to start working with Warbla, please do yourself a favor and purchase Kabui's Armor Making Books. These are really vital resources when it comes to learning how to use Warbla, so I can't stress enough. They're worth every penny. Finally, two other thermoplastics, Wonderflex and Sintra, used to be more commonly used back in the day, but Warbla is the current standard. As far as more advanced armor-making techniques go, I do want to mention 
fiberglass. First up, the benefits of fiberglass are that you can easily find it in home improvement stores. It's extremely durable, pretty inexpensive, and very versatile. But here's the catch, the fumes are toxic. It's time consuming to use. Sanding it takes an extremely long time if you want your paint job to look even remotely good, and it can quickly make your project very heavy. So it's really a material that you want to strongly think about before you plan to use it. Last but not least is casting and molding. This is an advanced technique that is not really beginner friendly. It's time consuming because you have to sculpt the thing you want to make, then you have to make a mold for the thing you want to make, then you have to cast the thing you want to make, usually multiple times. It's expensive, and it requires a relatively large workspace and extra safety equipment. But the end result is a professional finished product that's usually very easy to paint. If you're curious about casting and molding, please check out what Volpin and Bill are doing on their channels. They do incredible work and they're both very willing to share their knowledge with others. There's really no limit to what you can use to make armor. I've seen people use cereal boxes and oatmeal cans. Don't be afraid to think outside the box, man. Also, we live in a day and age where there are new materials being developed for cosplay all the time. Stay tuned to this channel to see demonstrations and also tutorials of new products that are coming soon to a cosplay world near you. There's a lot of cool stuff coming our way and I am super excited to share it with you. Real quick before you go, let me know in the comments what your favorite material for making armor is. And if you have any advice for others when it comes to making armor, feel free to share it too. Thank you for watching this video. For more episodes of Cosplay 101 and cosplay videos in general, please check out my channel and subscribe. I'm Mango Cyrene, and as always, Happy cosplay. There's fiberglass resin on my planner now because I put the resin can down on the planner. Now it's going to smell for the rest of my life. I regret some things.